When you see an insect, how do you feel? Some people think insects are gross and scary, but we want to help you understand them better. We want to teach you more about insects because it's important to appreciate and assist the insects in our ecosystem. When you know more, you'll be less nervous around them. Without insect pollination, this world would be a wasteland. In the first clip, you can see that the design of the flower, which is a daisy, helps the bee get the nectar out. Because of its landing pad shape, it's easier for the bee to get. Nectar is necessary for pollinators because it is their food. Pollinators hunt for nectar from different plants, and along the way, pollen gets attached to them. Pollen then falls on the next flower, allowing seeds to be made. This cycle is repeated many times. This bee is trying to get the nectar from the sedum flower. While the sedum flower is also umbrella shaped, the process is different. Sedum blossoms are flat surfaces with many small flowers coming out of it. Small insects jump inside the flowers, but big insects dip their feet in them. We all need the plants insects pollinate, so why don't we take better care of them? Next, let's look at some special features of insects and their life cycles. Every insect, whether it's big or small, has a unique life cycle. All life cycles can be put into two categories, simple and complete. Insects like grasshoppers and crickets have incomplete life cycles. One example is the two-striped murmuraya. It has three stages in its life cycle, egg, nymph, and adult. As an egg, it is encased in a pod along with up to 17 other eggs. Nymphs are like adults but are smaller and don't have wings. A nymph will shed its exoskeleton up to 10 times before becoming an adult. The life cycle of the fly is different from the two-stripe marmaria with four stages rather than three. This is called a complete metamorphosis, changing every aspect of its body from an egg to a larvae to a pupa and then to an adult. In Maine, this fly spends the winter in its pupal stage. This keeps it warm and safe until spring. Now let's look at physical adaptations of insect legs. Every insect has a head, thorax, abdomen, and six jointed legs. A reason that so many different insects can coexist in the same ecosystem is because they all have their own special physical adaptations. Let's look closely at legs. All insect legs have femurs, tibias, and tarsus, but they have different uses and sizes depending on the insect. On the tarsals of monarch butterflies, there are chemoreceptors that pick up certain chemicals that tell the butterfly what it has found, like dissolved sugar. The fly has tibias covered with little hairs used for cleaning wings and other body parts. It has a padded foot with taste buds for it to test the food it has landed on. These unique adaptations that, let it, that each insect has acquired over many generations work to help them thrive in Maine's climate. Insects have adapted in relationship with specific plants in this climate. You might be surprised to find out that insects can be super picky about which plants they eat and which plants they use for shelter. Living things get their energy from plants or other organisms that eat plants. This makes ecosystems stable and healthy. A bunch of animals, including us, depend on insects for food. Removing insects from our ecosystems will ruin it all. 35% of the world's food crops depend on pollinators to reproduce. Native plants have been in Maine long enough to adapt to the ecosystem, so they support more species of insects than any other plants. They have been here long enough to bond with the native species. If butterflies are taken away from their habitat, it could ruin the food web. For example, the monarch butterfly needs milkweed to get its toxins. Without these toxins, they can't defend themselves when they grow older. If we plant milkweed in our yards and parks, we will be able to increase the habitat for these butterflies. 95% of the natural land in America has been filled with suburbs and farms. We can stabilize the system again by planting native plants in our gardens. Insects will eat the plants and pollinate and make more plants. Insects such as the housefly prefer 
plants like black-eyed Susans and daisies for shelter. By adding sources of food and shelter to our own yards, we can bring back some of the biodiversity that makes our ecosystems thrive. What would we lose if all insects were to die? Is climate change capable, capable of this? Climate is the overall temperature and precipitation in a certain area over time. Climate change is a shift in this average that can make an area become colder and drier or hotter and more humid. This change can happen slowly over thousands of years or it can go much quicker. The quicker it goes, the more effect it has on the wildlife in the area. Insects who have a strong relationship to certain plants are the ones who will face the most harmful consequences. For example, grasses need moist soil to grow tall, but if the climate becomes hotter and dries up the soil, there won't be any water at all, and the plants may perish, leaving most Murmuria species without shelter or somewhere to lay their eggs and feed. Alternatively, mosquitoes feed off other insects and animals, so they wouldn't be too affected as long as there are other organisms. The males do drink nectar from flowers, but are not too picky. Still, a change in the climate is a change in the ecosystem. One thing we can do to slow down this change is to drive our cars less often and take public transportation whenever possible. People cannot live as the only species on this planet because it is other species like insects that create the ecosystem essential to us. The good news is that extinction takes a while, so if we start sharing our landscapes with insects, we should be able to save the much of the biodiversity that still exists. Here are three ways you can help insects in your own backyard. Do not rake the leaves in the fall. Insects have you have to use fallen leaves in the sh for shelter and food during the winter. Provide clean water in a shallow dish filled with stones for perching so that insects can safely reach the water. Use beneficial insects for pest control rather than pesticides that are deadly to many species.